It's another Easter in the year 2024, and we all at Edifier Hub, we want to wish you a happy Easter. To contribute to your Easter experience, we present to you the Easter story. A lot of persons would be asking themselves, especially those who are not believers, the question in their heart would be, what is Easter? What are they celebrating? What happened? Why are they happy? This video is going to answer all of those questions, but I want to ask that you stay patient, you stay tuned, and do not lose your focus. Let me also make this known to you when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. We'll use this video to explain the purpose of Easter to you, and please stay tuned as we take you on this journey. The first question we seek to answer in this video is what is Easter? Let's go into this. Easter is a period set aside by Christians to celebrate the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But behind this particular time of celebration, there's a whole lot of things that happened that we need to be looked into. If it is not looked into, if it is, it is not taught, if it's not talked about, if the story behind the celebration is not told, a lot of persons will be lost. So I want you to stay put as I take you on this journey. The first thing I want you to understand is that God is a God of justice. This is very important to understanding the Easter story. He is a God of justice. He operates a justice system in which when you fall short of the standard of justice that has been set, you don't have any other choice than to face the penalties that comes as a consequence for your disobedience or your shortcomings. This is very important. Now, when we read through the Bible in order to understand the story behind Easter, the story behind the celebration, we we'll see in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, he said, When Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone, for everyone has sinned. The explanation is this God created a man called Adam to become the first fruit for humanity. In God's heart when he created Adam, his intention was for Adam to become the father of humanity. Every other person will come from the lions of Adam. But Adam sinned, Adam disobeyed. And the consequence of the sin of Adam, as we see in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, is that Adam's sin spread to everyone. Adam's sin spread to everyone. How did Adam's sin spread to everyone? Romans chapter 5 verse 19 said, Because one person disobeyed God, many became sinners. But because one other person obeyed God, many will be made righteous. It is a thing of fatherhood. The fatherhood of Adam failed humanity because he disobeyed God. And because of that particular disobedience of Adam, everyone became sinners i'm going to read romans chapter 5 verse 19 again because one person disobeyed god many became sinners to give you perspective in this video i want you to understand that sin is actually disobedience to the word of god you know the bible is very clear on matters that has to do with disobedience and sin in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the scripture said, For the wages of sin is death. What does it mean? It means that for disobedience, the disobedience of Adam, the disobedience of humanity in Adam, the wages that we are to get from that particular action Adam has committed is death. So the wages of sin is death. The penalty for sin is death. That is what the scripture has said. You cannot 
turn this hand of justice because you remember how I started this video that God operates a justice system. The wages of sin is that you will have to pay that wage to be free from the shackles of sin. This is where the matter gets interesting. I want you to know that without the death of a sinless man, salvation cannot be bought. Without the death of a sinless man, the penalty for sin cannot be paid for. This is what I mean. Adam hadn't the capacity to be able to die for his sin, for that sin to be forgiven and forgotten. So this was what man had to do. I want you to understand this. Man was trying to pay the debt that he owed due to sin from Adam. Man had to put up a system of atonement, a system that we make for his inability because man is guilty. It's a case of the person who is owing a debt not having the capacity to pay that debt. So he needs another person who is wealthier or richer than him to be able to pay that debt for him. This is just the case. So man hadn't that capacity. What man had to do to appease the justice system of God was to now use the blood of goats. You know, man was trying to use animals to atone for his sin. So that those animals then in the old system would be pure, clean, without blemish, and it did not have the capacity to be able to cover sin for a long time. It was just for a period of time, and they will have to do it another year. Let me read what the scripture has to say about this. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 13, the scripture said that under the old system, the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of young cows could cleanse people's body from ceremonial impurity. So it was possible, but under the system, that this, the blood of goats, of bulls, and the ashes of young cow could cleanse people from their body from ceremonial impurities. This was done to appease the justice system of God, but it was not enough. It wasn't what God wanted. The wages of sin is death. But even the mercy of God was playing out that man could now build a system that he was using to make atonement. But this is not what is needed to take away sin. This is not what is needed to deal with sin internally. Now let's look at this. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 12. The scripture says, With his own blood, not the blood of goats, and caves, he entered the most holy place once for all time and secured our redemption forever. So what Jesus did was he came in as a sinless man out of God. Please mark that he came in as a sinless man born of a virgin, did not conceive of the Holy Spirit, did not wear or carry anything that has to do with the lions or the lineage of Adam. So he came as a man, but as a sinless man, offered in death. So the death of Jesus was the wage that was required to pay the debt of sin. The death of Jesus was the wage required to pay the debt of sin. So when he died with his own blood, he secured our redemption forever. So the death of Jesus, his burial and his resurrection was centered at making us right with God. It has nothing to do with somebody who was just killed for no reason. No, it was a deliberate effort to pay the debt of sin that mankind was owing. To give you perspective as I tie up this video, I'm going to read Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1 to 10. The Bible said that the old system under the laws of Moses was only a shadow, a dim preview of the good things to come. Not only the good things themselves, the sacrifice under that system were repeated again and again, year after year, but they were never able to provide perfect cleansing for those who came to worship. I hope you're following this. If they could have 
provided perfect cleansing, the sacrifices would have stopped. For the worshippers would have been purified once for all time and their feelings of guilt would have disappeared. But instead, those sacrifices actually reminded them of their sins year after year. For it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. It is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. Verse 5 that is why when Christ came into the world, he said to God, You did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings, but you have given me a body to offer. I hope you are following what I am reading. Verse 6 This is Jesus or Christ speaking to God. He said, You were not pleased with the burnt offerings or other offerings for sins. 7 Then I said, Look, I have come to do your will, O God as it is written about me in the scriptures. 8. First Christ said, You do not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings or burnt offerings or other offerings for sins, nor were you pleased with them, though they were required by the law of Moses. 9. Then he said, Look, I have come to do your will. He cancels the first covenant in order to put the second into effect. Verse 10, for God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Christ once for all time. Hebrews 10 verse 10, for God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ once for all time. This is actually the purpose and the reason why we celebrate Easter. I believe this particular scripture I have read has opened your eye to a lot of things that surrounds the celebration of Easter. I'm going to, to crown this up, I'm going to read Romans chapter 3 verse 22 to 25, all in a bid to make you understand the story behind Easter. 22 said, we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. 23. For everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God with undeserved kindness declares that we are righteous. He did, through, he did this through Jesus Christ when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. 25. Please pay attention. Please pay attention to this. For God presented Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in time past. Now, these scriptures I've read is just to make you understand that man fell short of God's glory. God still presented Jesus Christ as the sacrifice for sin. So when we celebrate Easter, we are celebrating God's faithfulness. We are celebrating the sacrifice that God made for us through Jesus Christ to obtain our salvation, to take us out of the shackles of sin and of death. I want to tie up this video by telling you that Christ is the reason for the celebration of Easter and we celebrate Easter because Christ sacrificed himself, he sacrificed his life, he shed his blood, he died to give you salvation, to make you right with God. It's no longer about your efforts. It's no longer about your moral standards. It's about what Christ has done for us. And I hope you celebrate this Easter knowing this story. Thank you for watching this video. Kindly subscribe if you have not subscribed. Click on the notification bell to get notified of any time I make a new uploads. Thank you.